Angola's president, João Lorenzo, has won a second five-year term. This is after his party, the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola, emerged victorious in the August 24 tightly contested general election. The MPLA has been in power for nearly five decades now. The National Electoral Commission reporting that the ruling party won by just over 51% of the votes, while the main challenger, UNITA, secured just below 44%. Well, let's get some analysis now, and we're joined by Marisa Lorenzo, a political analyst, talking to us from Johannesburg. Marisa, good morning to you. So a very, very tight contest there. The MPLA managing 51% of the votes. There has been contestation on the part of UNITA suggesting that this was um, an unfair uh, outcome. Is this a credible election? Was it a credible election? Well, there have been concerns around transparency uh, since even before the election, and this is purely because the MPLA um, essentially has control over the courts. It also has control over the National Electoral Commission. But in addition to that, in November last year, it actually passed a law that would centralize vote counting in Luanda, which means that instead of votes being counted officially at a municipal or provincial level, they're all counted in the capital, and this removes a layer of transparency. So there have, you know, been concerns over transparency for a long time. And then what happened is during this election, a civil society group did something called a parallel vote where they did their own vote counting in tandem with the official results. And they showed that it was actually a much closer race, even closer than what the official results um, show. But having said that, I think, you know, it still showed that between the MPLA and UNITA, there wasn't much of a difference, much like the official result has, has indicated. Yeah. All right. And I wonder whether you have had uh, either sight or listened to observers of this election. These are people that I should think would um, whose analysis of the election would be taken on board as to whether or not this is indeed a credible electoral outcome. What's your sense there? Have you seen or heard anything from the election observers? I think effectively when you have election observers, um, and I think it's, I think it's typically the case, um, and I think it's happened here as well, um, and I said this before, they're there to, they're there to just sort of rubber stamp the process. They're not there to kind of kick up a fuss. We have also seen countries like Portugal say, you know, if there are concerns over electoral credibility, you know, that's a domestic issue that Angola has to take up itself. Mm -hmm. So essentially this is a fight that you need to have to decide if it wants to engage in. Um, and to do that, what it first needs to do, since we now have the official results announced yesterday, it has to approach the National Electoral Commission within the next two days, um, and then it has to launch a challenge. The National Electoral Commission will then decide if it will hear that challenge and then take it through to the Constitutional Court. Um, but in terms of what will sort of happen next, I think that, you know, people have largely accepted the result. Um, I think as well, if the MPLA had uh, emerged victorious with 60 to 70 percent of the vote, I think there would have been a larger outcry. But I think that people do feel that this is a relatively fair outcome, given the circumstances where it is difficult to operate fairly with the MPLA's total control over state institutions. Does that assume that Angola will continue to experience political stability? Well, yes, absolutely. I think for the next five years, what we're, what we're looking at is more of the same from the administration led by President Lorenzo. So, for example, his economic reforms, that's one area where he's had uh, a significant amount of success. It obviously has not trickled down, you know, to the broader population. Society is very unequal. But if we look at how, you know, what the changes he's made to the currency regime, if we look at how he's managed to tackle the country's debt burden and, and all of that, we you know, those are those are sort of achievements that he's managed to to do um, in his first term, and I think he'll sort of carry on with that approach. And then because we still have the MPLA in power, they've got 124 seats in Parliament now compared to UNITA's 90. It's not as easy to to sort of pass laws without having that kind of debate. But you know, they'll still they'll they'll still be able to push through the policies um, that they would want to push through. Yeah. Just a final question to you, Marisa. Angola, much like South Africa, is a youthful country. How would you gauge the participation of young people in this election? I think young people are becoming a bit disillusioned with the system. Um, 
and you can't really blame them because Angola is only normally a, a democracy. And when you're living in a democracy where effectively the only right that you have is really to vote, but your other rights are not really protected, for example, like the right to protest and media freedom and that, I think a lot of young people are sort of feeling like, you know, perhaps the way through change is not is not through the ballot box, because if that's the only democratic right you have, that doesn't really feel like much. I think there is a pocket of urban youth that um, does feel a little bit more engaged. Um, and, for example, they've responded very, very well to UNITA's modernization, to UNITA's message. You need to really resonate with them. But I think it's kind of divided. You know, you have this pocket of enthusiastic supporters, but I don't think they're enough to shift the needle just yet. Um, I think the next five years are going to be very interesting because if people have lost faith in the ballot box but they are frustrated, they might look to change the status quo in other ways. Alternatively, we have to wait until we have the general elections again in 2027 or if Lorenzo finally does agree to hold local elections, which Angola has never had. Marisa Lorenzo, political analyst, thank you very much for your analysis of uh, the recent electoral outcome coming out of Angola.